Revelation chapter number 1, we'll begin reading verse number 9. The Bible says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and Pergamos, and Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and, Phila and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sh sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his hand, right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to be in the house of God today. We thank you for this lovely day, but we thank you more for the great privilege, Lord, the liberty and the freedoms we have to be able to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you for a good Sunday school hour. We thank you for the good reports from over at the jail. God, we thank you for those open doors. God, we thank you for the good singing, choir singing, congregational singing, the special singing has all been a blessing. God, we're thankful for that. Lord, we're certainly thankful for the reading of the Word of God. Now, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you'd put a hedge about us now. I pray for the sweet Holy Ghost of God to manifest himself in a wonderful way. I pray, Lord, for conviction of sin. I also pray for confirmation of righteousness. God, I pray that, Lord, you'd bless your people. Lord, I pray for a balm of Gilead for those that are hurting. God, I pray for strength for the ones that are struggling. I pray, Father, for encouragement for those that have been discouraged. I pray, Lord, for hope for the ones in the valley. And God, I certainly pray that, Lord, you'd continue to help the ones on the mountaintop to rejoice and praise the Lord. Now, Father, I pray your perfect will would be accomplished in every heart. You know our downsetting, our uprising. You know our yesterdays, our todays. You even know our tomorrows. God, you certainly know what we stand in need of. Father, I pray you'd speak to our hearts. Uh, I pray that sinners would be saved. Uh, and I pray the saints of God be revived and refreshed. Uh, go out forth from this place shining as lights. Uh, and folks, take notice that we've been with Jesus. Uh, and the Father, use this unworthy vessel uh, God, I realize when I'm weak, you are strong. Uh, God, I pray that, Lord, you'd strengthen the brethren now. Uh, and I pray that you'd get glory to your glorious name. Uh, Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Uh, thank you for your kindness and tender mercy towards us. Uh, and thank you for your good grace. Uh, and God, we plead for that now. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to several things uh, as a way of introduction. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the exiled. Uh, look at the exiled uh, in verse number 9. He says, I, John, we know this is John the Revelator, John the Apostle, uh, John the brother of James, the sons of Zebedee. Uh, he says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, 
and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ uh, uh, was in the isle that is called Patmos uh, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, John has been exiled uh, to an island called Patmos. Uh, Brother Ray, they tried to kill him. Uh, they tried to boil him in oil, but he just didn't die. Uh, so they just sent him off to an island to die. Uh, uh, Patmos was a destitute place. Uh, it was a place uh, that was not uh, flowing with lush fruit trees uh, and lush vegetation. Uh, it was a desert place. Uh, they said, surely uh, that old man of God will die out there. Uh, hey, he was there, Brother Bob, not because he was a thief. Uh, not because uh, 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 he was a murderer. Uh, he was there, uh, 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 Brother Ron, uh, uh, because of his, uh, the word of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, because he was a Christian uh, uh, to the utmost part of the wor word. Uh, he would not bow or bend on his faith, uh, but he proclaimed Jesus as Lord uh, of all. Uh, and they exiled this man of God uh, to this place called Patmos. Uh, Friend, you mark her down. If Jesus doesn't come, they're already preparing places for folks like us. They tried a couple years ago to say we were non-essential. Next time, they'll try to prove it. Mm. I hate to be a doomer and gloomer, and I hate to put fear in your bones, but you better get all of Jesus you can right now. Because there's coming a time you may have to prove whether or not you're truly a believer. Mm -hmm. Less than two hours from here, they built concentration camps a decade ago. Why do they need concentration camps in Midwest America? For people that won't comply. Mm -hmm. They exiled him. They'll try to exile or execute us. You say, oh, Jesus never let that happen. No, he didn't let that happen to the other apostles, did he? John's the only one that died a natural death. Mm. It amazes me, John's also the only one that showed up at the cross. Maybe the closer we stay to Jesus, uh, the more the chance there is we'll die a natural death instead of an executionary death. Well, anyway, that's a whole other message. Don't want to get y'all bogged down. Y'all bogged down now. The truth is coming. Used to, they'd say, if you was a Christian, was there enough evidence to prove it? You may be put on trial for your faith. Mm. What amazes me, uh, how many churches closed and how many Christians uh, quit going to church over uh, uh, fearful of catching a, a virus. Mm. And they're out of church today because they're afraid of a little virus. Mm. I know the great physician. Anyway, anyway, anyway. We see the exiled. I want you to notice his experience. Hmm? Don't feel too sorry for him. He's out there and they've left him to die. But God knew right where he was. Uh, and I don't know what happened, but I do read where, John, where God uh, told Elijah to go by a brook and God sent ravens in with bread and flesh every morning, uh, every evening. Uh, God provided fresh water for Elijah. Here's one of his apostles. Uh, I, I don't know how God took care of him, but mark her down, neighbor. God took care of him. But while he's exiled on Patmos, look at his experience. I'm, not, I'm starting not to feel sorry for him. I'm starting to envy him right here. And he said in verse number 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. It's a good thing to be in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Uh, and he said, I heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Uh, what thou seest, write in a book uh, and send it to the seven churches. Then he names the seven churches. Uh, Verse 12, and I turned to see the voice uh, that spake with me. Uh, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Uh, I don't have time to get in all that, uh, but these seven candlesticks represent the seven churches, okay? Uh, and then he goes on to say, uh, I, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, uh, one like unto the Son of Man, uh, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the pouch with a golden girdle, his head were and his hairs were white like wool, uh, as white as snow. Uh, 
His eyes is a flame, uh, were as a flame of fire. Uh, his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in the furnace. Uh, and his voice, the sound of many waters. Uh, doesn't sound like them pictures people paint of him, does it? Uh, doesn't look like he's got uh, 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 light brown hair and blue eyes. Uh, no, he's got white hair. Uh, eyes as flames of fire. Uh, countenance is his brass. Are you listening? Uh, in his right hand, seven stars. Uh, those are the seven angels to the church. Uh, an angel is a minister. Uh, those are the seven pastors uh, of the seven churches. Uh, again, I don't have time to get in all that. didn't cost anything. All right. Uh, then he goes on to saying, out of his mouth, uh, when a sharp two-edged sword, uh, that's the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, hey, uh, and his countenance was as the sun that shineth in his strength. Uh, we see his experience. Uh, what did he experience when he was exiled? Uh, he experienced the Lord. Lord, hallelujah, huh? God showed up. Now notice something I do want to look at in his experience. Notice, first of all, he heard. Look at verse 10. I was in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Then he saw, look at verse 12, and I turned to see the voice that speak with me and being turned, I saw seven golden candles and went on and he saw the Son of Man. Uh, there's a lot of people wanting to see God. You'll never see God till you hear God. How do I hear Him? So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Uh, and when you uh, I listen to what God said uh, and you believe on the Lord in your heart, uh, I then, my dear friends, you'll see Him by the eye of faith. Uh, mm, Brother James just sang about it. Mm, I see the Lord all the time on the pages of his word. Hmm? Uh, can I help you with something? You'll never see him till you hear him. Uh -huh. We see his experience. We see the exile. Notice his elicitation or his reaction. Look at verse number 7. And when I saw him, I ran up, put my arms around him and said, Boy, it's good to see you, Lord. Is that what he said? Well, I hear all these songs, I'm going to hug him, and I'm going to... No, look what John did. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Three times in your King James Bible, you'll find somebody who saw the glorified Christ, and all three of them had the same reaction. They fell before him as a dead man. Hmm? Uh, we see his reaction. It was overwhelming to the point that he almost died. Hmm? Hmm? Now notice, if you will, the easy. Here the Lord's going to comfort him. Look again at verse 17. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I'm the first and the last. I'm he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore, to amen, and have the keys of hell and death. Here the Lord comforted him. The Lord said, Hey, don't fear, it's me. Huh? It's the one you love. You're the disciple whom Jesus loved. And you loved me and I loved you. Uh, he got to speaking to him and comforting him. He said, I'm he that was dead and I'm alive and I'm alive forevermore. Got the keys to death and hell. Huh? He begins to comfort him with, this, with the very words of God. Uh, and can I say, uh, that's what God will do when you and I are troubled. He'll comfort us. And I bless the Lord for that. How many entries in verse number 10? Verse number 10 said, I was in the Spirit, capitalized, on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Fifteen times in your King James Bible, you'll find the word Lord and day in the same verse. This is the only place you find the Lord's day put together. Now, we've come to worship. It's the Lord's day. Hmm? Uh, and can I say this? Uh, it's the Lord's day. Jehovah God. That's what Israel knew him as. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. And you and I have been saved by the good grace of God, have been adopted into the family of God. So it's the Lord's day. So in other words, it's Father's day. So I want to preach on it. It's Father's day. Amen. Huh? It's his day. It's Father's day. Now I want to preach about the Father. It's Father's day. Huh? Can I say... Uh, because it's Father's Day, uh, therefore we should rejoice. It's Father's Day. 
we've come out to celebrate him hey if it wasn't for him none of us would have ever been he formed us in the womb can I say uh, hey he uh, I, I formed Adam out of the dust of the ground and breathed in Adam the breath of life and man became a living soul well uh, hey our breath comes from the hand of God uh, Hey, uh, he's our father. Uh, he's the father of creation. Uh, but happy day, neighbor. The night I got born again, he became my heavenly father. Uh, hey, what a blessing to know him and the free pardon of sins. Uh, we have cause to rejoice. Uh, say, preacher, gas is going through the roof. Uh, we got a president who can't even ride a bike. Uh, pastor, things are a mess out there. I got good news. Uh, we got a heavenly father uh, who's on the throne. Uh, and nothing has caught him by surprise. Uh, and he's promised he's never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Uh, hey, uh, our father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, he knows how to take care of his children. Uh, uh, what a blessing. Uh, it may be going to pot out there, uh, hey, but we're headed upwards in here. Uh, we've got cause to rejoice today. Uh, it's Father's Day. Therefore, we ought to rejoice. Uh, I have nothing to be sad about. I have nothing to be sorry for. I know the Lord. Hey, this thing's about over. If you can't see that, if you get to know the Lord, you'll see it too. Uh, but I've got good news. The church ain't going down. She's going up. Yeah. What a blessing. Uh, it's Father's Day. I'm going to rejoice. I'm not going to read the Sunday paper. I'm not going to watch Meet the Press or anything else that will depress me on the news. It's Father's Day. I'm going to rejoice. Uh, he's got it all under control. We ought to not only rejoice, but because it's Father's Day, we ought to reverence. Uh, it's a fancy word for worship. Can I say we ought to reverence or worship with sincere thanksgiving? There's not a person in this building that's not uh, sowing better than you reaped, or reaping better than you sowed. Uh, a lot of us sowed some bad seeds in our life. But look where we're at. We're in the Father's house. We're sitting at the Father's table. Huh? We're, we're uh, 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 doing some pretty good reaping compared to what we sowed. Huh? Most of us, we got what we deserve, we'd already be in hell. Uh, uh, the rest of us would certainly be headed there. Uh, but I'm not going to hell. Uh, hey, I've got something to be thankful for. Uh, hey, uh, I know who my father is. Uh, and I know uh, uh, where all his bounty comes from, all my blessings come from. Uh, he's been good to me. Uh, we ought to have sincere thanksgiving around here today because he's a good, faithful father. Hmm? Uh, my children know if they need anything, it's theirs. They don't even have to ask. Huh? I wish I wouldn't have said that. Christian knows where I keep the stakes. Huh? Well, they know. If he wanted a steak, not only does he know where they're at, but he knows his mama would fix it for him. Huh? Along with broccoli and cheese casserole and hash brown casserole and whatever else he wants. Huh? They know if they need money. I don't have much, but what I have is theirs. They know everything but to ask for the keys to the car. Other than that, they can fight over that when I go home, all right? Really, Jordan don't apply. He don't fit in it too well. Uh, his head's above the windshield. He gets bugs with his forehead. Not a good thing. Well, I'm just trying to tell you I don't have to crawl and beg God to meet my needs. He's promised to do that, friend. Matter of fact, I don't even have to ask him. He's already sent it before I even know I got a need. Are you listening? We ought to come to his house with sincere thanksgiving. We ought to come to his house with songs of praise. You know what I like about all the songs I heard today? They uplifted him. They spoke of him. They talked about how good he's been. Huh? Listen, I, I want to hear songs that glorify him. I don't want to hear courses that get on my nerves. I want to hear songs where the songwriter knew God and he pinned down some words that inspired me to sing about the great God that I know. It's Father's Day. I've got to reverence him. huh? Can I say this? Uh, I've got to reverence him with shouts of exultation. 
I always chuckle at folks that get a little nervous when they come to church and folks get to shouting. They don't get nervous when they go to a ball game. Uh, they don't get nervous when they're out there on the highway. You hear a lot of shouting out there and they ain't all good. Huh? But how come it is, Brother Ron, when they come to church, they get a little nervous and people get a little loud? Uh, I heard recently, I think it was Brother Ron, somebody was saying we was a snake handling church. Wrong. <laughs> Brother Ray's my best friend. He killed one out here. He said it was crossing the driveway, headed to my office, and he got him with a lawnmower. I love you, Brother Ray. I love you. Uh, we don't handle them. We end their poor, miserable life. That's what we do. He said, we're a snake handling church. You know what they're saying? They don't like our style of worship. We don't handle snakes. Trust me. You can name me or brand me whatever you want to. I don't care. When I come to the house of God, I want to reverence my Lord. Uh, and I promise you, friend, this is the most quiet world you're ever going to be in. Those that die and go to hell, the Bible says there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh, if they could plug their ears up, they would from all the misery and woe. Uh, but I read over there in Revelation 5 uh, where there's a number that no man can number uh, uh, that began to praise and worship him uh, and shout, Worthy is the Lamb uh, that was slain to receive power and riches and honor and glory. Uh, hey, we're going to shout it out in glory. I just want to get practiced up. Mm. You say, well, it's, it's just not my nature to get excited. I promise you, if I hit your toe with a hammer, you'll get excited. What's it got to do with your nature? If you got born again, you got a new nature. See, some of you are too worried about what other people think. You need to get beyond you. We come to the Father's house. Now, if you're earthly father and living you might have got him a card or sent him a text or something why don't you let your heavenly father know how much you think of him uh, it's father's day therefore we should rejoice we should reverence but we also ought to remember we ought to remember the sacrifice of Calvary I'm glad she sang that song I've been to Calvary hmm? we ought to remember what it costs for us to be here today darling son of God left heaven walked into the womb of a virgin was born in this world lived a sinless perfect life uh I uh, uh, lived some 33 years uh, and after uh, he fulfilled all the prophecies leading up to it uh, he marched up Calvary's mountain uh, uh, he bore his cross uh, and bore our sin and shame uh, and he yielded himself to the cross uh, was suspended between heaven and earth uh, and there he bled and died and emptied himself of his life's blood uh, to become the propitiation or the sacrifice for our sins uh, he gave his life uh, that we might have life uh, he who knew no sin became sin uh, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him uh, hey we ought to remember what it cost for us to be here uh, Jesus bled and died for our sins he proved the love of God for you and I you ought to remember the, the sacrifice of Calvary you ought to remember your salvation experience you ought to be able to go back to a place in your mind where you met the master hmm you ought to remember. You might not remember the day, the hour. I know some people got it down to the very minute. You might not remember all that stuff. might not even remember the message the preacher was preaching, but you'll certainly remember the place where you met Jesus. Uh, you ought to go back there in your mind. You ought to do that often. Remember what garbage dump God found you in. Remember what it's like when you didn't have any hope. Remember what it's like when you was afraid to go to sleep at night, afraid you wouldn't wake up in the morning need to remember what it's like uh, uh, when you're full of doubt and uh, full of all the scars of sin, but then you met the Master. And life began to change. And oh, what a day when you met the Master. You ought to remember that. You ought to remember all the times He's came to you and soothed you in your valleys. Uh, Amazes me how many people talk about all the th times he came by and he bailed them out, but you need to remember what it's like when you had no hope in a valley. And he came by with a word of comfort, just like he did John right here. And he eased your suffering in the midst of your valley. Oh, you ought to remember those times. 
I thought about this. It's Father's Day. There should, therefore, we should remind others. I right? to remind others that Jesus saves. There's hope in this old world. And His name is Jesus. I ought to remind them that He not only saves, He satisfies. The indictment against the window-washing crowd... Uh, the indictment against them is they turn their congregations over about once a year. Uh, the beauty about Christ is He's never lost a one. He satisfies. I don't need to look for another. I found the one. His name is Jesus. Hmm? He has the words of eternal life. He changed my life. Hmm? Uh, one of the great testimonies of our church is we got folks in here that have been here 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 22 years, 25 years. Clint's been here about 50 years, huh? Uh, that's, a, that's an indictment, a good indictment on our church. Uh, they met the master and he planted them in his garden and they're satisfied. Hmm. Well, don't you need fog machines and rock bands to build a church? Well, you can build a crowd. But nobody can build a church. They that labor, labor in vain, except the Lord build the house. And I find he does a good job building a church. And can I say this about uh, 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 the Lord? When he builds a church, he fitly frames it together, and it's not soon going to fall apart. huh? We need to remind people that Jesus saves he satisfies, and that he's soon to return. He's coming soon. There's no doubt. It's a song the choir sings. Huh? You ought to get up every morning and take a look to the eastern sky. Think, boy, today could be the day. Hmm. He's coming soon. Then I thought about this late, last. It's Father's Day. Therefore, we ought to be refreshed. You know what? I always find comfort in the house of God. Because I'm refreshed by his presence. Now I know God's got people everywhere. We got some folks here from Arkansas, and I was told I wasn't allowed to do any Arkansas jokes. Although they did give us Hillary and Bill. <laughs> Just saying. But we gave y'all Mitch McConnell, so we're even, okay? Uh, but listen. God's got people everywhere. He really does. But I say this, and I do not say this arrogantly, but I say this, I feel sorry for anybody that's not us. Because I know what he does around here. And I know how much he shows up around here. And can I say his presence refreshes me? I know if I can just make it to the house of God, somebody will get up and have a song that will help me. Somebody will shake my hand and have something kind to say that will help me. But then he'll just kind of step out from behind the shadows during worship somewhere, and that refreshes me. Uh, I can go another mile after I've been to the house of God. Uh, we ought to be refreshed with his presence. We ought to be refreshed with his peace. I don't know what's going on in this world, but I have a peace that passes all understanding. And I don't mean to sound flippant, but I really don't care. The Lord's got it under control. I really don't care. They say, what about the election? What about the... I'm, I'm going to vote. going to vote the best candidate I believe God would have us to vote for. But I'm here to tell you, I'm not worried about all this stuff. I'm worried about the Lord. And I found He gives peace, and it doesn't matter. It'll be all right. I'm refreshed with that. I'm refreshed with His presence. I'm refreshed with His promises. Uh, no matter what I'm going through, I found he's got a promise in this blessed old book that helps me, that helps me, that refreshes me, that lets me know he's in control and it'll be all right. Nothing's ever caught him by surprise. Nothing's even ever occurred to him. He is God, and he's my father. It's Father's Day. And shame on us if we waste Father's Day not letting a father know how much he means to us. Amen. Father's Day. It's the Lord's Day. And I trust you came out to celebrate Him. Maybe this morning you don't know Him. We'd love to give you, get an opportunity to introduce you to Him.
a moment, we're going to have an invitation. We invite you to come. If you'll come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. You can know the Lord. He can be your heavenly Father. Maybe you know him, but it's been a while since you celebrated him. Well, the reason we have Father's Day for our earthly fathers is to remind us how important they are in our life. Well, today you've come out and it's Father's Day. Maybe you need to come. Because you've been reminded how important the Father is in your life. You need to just come and thank Him and tell Him how much you love Him. Maybe this morning He spoke to you about something else. Maybe it's been a while since you just told Him, thank you for saving me. Maybe it's something else He's showed you in your life that He's not pleased with. You want to come get it taken care of. Well, during the invitation, why don't you get it taken care of? And so you can leave out of here rejoicing, refreshed, excited that you was in the Father's house on Father's Day. Some are already coming. Brother Clint, if you'll come. Miss Renee, come get a song of invitation. I'll stand while they're coming. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. Thank you for the hope we have in Christ. Thank you for the blessed Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for peop the people of God. Thank you for a peace that passes understanding. Now, Father, I don't know anybody's heart in this building. But, Father, you know everybody's heart. God, if there's somebody here that don't know you in the free part of sins, I pray today be the day of their salvation. Lord, maybe one of your children's been a prodigal and they need to come home. I pray today be the day they get back to the Father's house. Maybe, Lord, somebody just needs to come by and tell you they love you and they're thankful. I don't know, but, God, whatever the need is, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God and speak to hearts. But I pray especially for that one that may be lost, that today would be the day of their salvation. Bless in this invitation. Glorify your name. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.